Do you want to stop jumping to conclusions? Well, in this video, we're going to look at two mindsets that will help you stop jumping to conclusions. Hey, this is Caleb from the Ina Road Church of Christ. Now, I know what you're thinking. Actually, I don't. No one does. One of the most common ways we jump to conclusions is by assuming we know what other people are thinking. Now, why do we do that? We do that because we think or we assume that we see everything clearly and completely when actually we don't. Today we're going to look at two mindsets that will help us not jump to conclusions. But before we read our main text, which is Acts chapter 28 verses 1 through 6, I want to give you the context. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is, was on a ship with other prisoners and the ship hit a sandbar and ran aground. So everyone had to jump out of the boat and swim to shore. And that's where we pick up our main text. Acts chapter 28 and verse 1 says, Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. Malta has nothing to do with malt shakes. I looked it up in the Greek and the Hebrew. You're welcome. Verse 2 says, The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. The islanders showed unusual kindness. Now this unusual kindness wasn't Andy's mints being left on the pillows or free shampoo samples or extra pair of gloves because it was so cold. Maybe you should wear these extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. This unusual kindness was the fact that these islanders who have never met these people that have just swam up on their shore they find out they're criminals and yet they still say we need to take care of them we need to show them hospitality make sure they're warm make sure they're fed just they're, they're, they're taking care of them so instead of the mindset that we typically have which is stranger danger they're thinking hey let's show them some kindness so it was unusual kindness now i first thought that this unusual kindness was because they're living on an island and these islanders haven't seen anyone for maybe hunt, like years and years and years. And so they're just really lonely. But when I looked up Malta, I found this out. It had excellent harbors and was ideally located for trade. So these islanders, they've seen people come in and out, right? It's part of how they made a living by trading with uh, people who would come in on ships. So it wasn't because they were extremely lonely. They're just very kind people and were showing extreme kindness to Paul and these prisoners. Verse 3, Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. Now Paul wasn't putting God to the test by seeing how close he could get to this poisonous snake. He wasn't flirting with danger. He was just trying to help out when the snake was drawn out by the heat of the fire and decided to bite him. Verse 4, When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess Justice has not allowed him to live. I like to imagine that this goddess of justice looked a lot like Judge Judy. Notice that these islanders jumped to the conclusion that Paul is a murderer. And I want to point out that this jumping of conclusion is actually very rational. They just saw these people swim up on their shore with Romans and found out that these are criminals. So there's probably a good chance that some of those criminals actually are murderers. So they're jumping to a rational conclusion. Now, even though it's rational, it's wrong. And a lot of times we, when we jump to conclusions, this is why we can relate to these people is because we jump a lot of times to rational conclusions. But just because it's rational doesn't mean it's right. Sometimes when we see people going through very unfortunate events, we can start to think, ooh, they must have done something wrong. Like what bad thing did they do to deserve what they're going through? This is what happens in the story of Job in the Old Testament. Job's friends start to analyze Job. What did you do wrong? You must have done something wrong. We need to take note of that and realize that this is a real temptation for us. And when we see our friends or family or people just going through really hard times, we need to refrain from jumping to conclusions. One time I was preaching and I looked out 
and I noticed that someone was giving me bad looks. Like they were angry, they were just, their facial expressions were all over the map. Before I was done preaching, they just walked out. And I remember telling my wife, I think so-and-so was upset with my sermon. Well, later so-and-so came to me and said what had happened. It was that their tooth was killing them. They had to leave the auditorium. So sometimes we can jump to conclusions and, and it's rational. We have evidence. We, we, we think we see everything clearly and completely when actually we don't. Last week, Melissa and I were at the dinner table and we hear our oldest son say, do you want to kill your sister? And I immediately am thinking, oh, what is going on in the room? Melissa gets up really quickly and she goes into the room and she says, what did you just say? And what she found was our youngest son was sitting on his sister. And Joshua, the oldest one who said, do you want to kill your sister? Wasn't saying, hey, do you want to kill your sister? He was saying, hey, get off of her. You might kill her. That's what he meant by it. So Melissa and I, we, we jumped to a conclusion that wasn't accurate. And we, we thought we knew what was going on, but we were wrong. Verse five says, but Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. The islanders jumped to another rational conclusion. They've seen poisonous snakes before bite and kill probably some of their own. So when they see Paul being bitten by this poisonous snake, they jump to the conclusion he's going to swell and he's going to die. That's a rational conclusion, right? So let's go back though to our original question, which is how do you stop jumping to conclusions? And one of the first mindsets we need to adopt is a mindset that says, I'm open to being wrong. I'm open to being wrong. And something that these Islanders do that I really appreciate is that they're willing to check to see if their conclusion is actually right. Notice that the text says they waited a long time to see if what was going to happen to Paul, right? Now, waiting a long time can change us. Right now, we're having to wait a long time in quarantine. And I want to encourage you to take this time to really think about what are some things in your life that you might want to change. Because waiting a long time can change things. It can change beliefs. It can also change bananas. Um, it changed these islanders. They, after waiting a long time, they say, you know what? We were wrong with our first conclusions. And then what do they do? They jump right into another conclusion, which is, okay, Paul isn't a murderer. He isn't, you know, being punished by the gods. Paul must be a god, right? And this is another thing that we can do. We can jump from one extreme to another extreme. What are these islanders going to need to get out of this other conclusion that's wrong? They're going to have to have the mindset, I'm open to the fact that I might be wrong. One of the things that I love about Jesus is how understanding he is. When people had questions, he had answers. But there was one particular time after Jesus teached about some uh, future events, his disciples came up to him and asked him, when exactly will these things take place? Now, this happened to be a situation where the father hadn't revealed the exact day or hour that these future events were going to take place. And instead of pretending like he knew everything, in this situation, he says, the son of man doesn't know. In other words, he says, I don't know. There are some times in our lives where we're going to be tempted to jump to conclusions when we need to be okay with, we don't know. And we may not know in this life and that's okay. So if we want to stop jumping to conclusions, we need to adopt this first mindset, which says I'm open to the fact I might be wrong. But the second mindset we need to adopt comes from the book of James, James chapter one, verse 19, which says, be quick to listen, slow to speak. Am I quick to jump to conclusions or am I quick to listen? Am I quick to make assumptions or am I quick to listen? Am I quick to um, jump to conclusions and start slandering or gossiping or pushing those conclusions? Or am I quick to listen and really 
be patient and wait sometimes because sometimes you want to know the answer, but you have to wait a long time to find the answer. It's easy to misjudge people and then mistreat people. Once we start misjudging people, we start to, because we've grabbed onto those conclusions, like, I think that person stole my candy bar. Now we start looking at them in a certain way. We start treating them a certain way. One of the most popular stories in the Old Testament is David and Goliath. What, what I want to focus on is what happened before David fought Goliath. He was a shepherd boy working and his father said, I want you to go check on your brothers. And so he gets some food and he makes sure that the um, sheep that he's taking care of are going to be good with someone else while he's gone. And he goes and he finds his brothers there on the battlefield. And this is what happens. Eliab, his oldest brother, sees David and this is what he has to say to David. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 28. Eliab says, why have you come down here? Now, if Eliab just stopped there, that's a great question. Why are you here, brother? You know, But he goes on to say, and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? Now he's starting to make some accusations like, you know, you're, you're not being responsible. Then he definitely crosses the line and jumps to conclusions when he says this. I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. So Eliab is claiming, I know your heart and I know your motives, David, when actually God is the only one who really knows our heart. He really knows our motives. There's a temptation to look at other people and start to try to figure out their motives and try to you know, say that we know their motives and when we don't. We really don't. God does. And that's really important that God really does know. And that's what you can control. There's going to be people in your life who will judge you and it will hurt because there might be people that you really love and yet they're judging your motives, right? But you know your motives and God does. And that's what you have control over. You don't have control over what they're saying about you and your motives. You just focus on what you can control. Why must people jump to conclusions and try to know everyone's motives all the time? Why can't the chicken just cross the road without his motives being questioned? That's all I'm saying. But on a serious note, when we jump to conclusions, we often hurt people who are closest to us. This is one of the reasons why we do need to develop a mindset that says, hold on, slow down, wait a minute. I don't want to jump to conclusions right now. I don't know. I need to really... Uh, look for the facts and wait and suspend my judgment because I care about this person. So if we want to stop jumping to conclusions, we need to develop these mindsets. Number one, be open to the fact that we might be wrong. Number two, be quick to listen and slow to speak. These mindsets are going to bless all of our relationships. Now in the past, I would say, now just go do it. But I would set you up for failure because the truth is if we're going to make these real changes in our lives, we need our, we need help from God. So I want to take the time to ask God to help us work on these things. And it's going to take time. Be, be gracious to yourself and gracious to other people who are making these changes. Let's pray. Our father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your guidance. Thank you so much for your Holy spirit. Father, we don't want to jump to conclusions. We don't want to hurt our relationships with people. Please, God, help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Lord, help us to understand that we don't see everything completely and clearly. And so we need to refrain from jumping to conclusions. Father, please truly help us and truly change us while we're waiting. We thank you so much for your help. Thank you so much for your word and your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you need any prayers or have any questions about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, then send an email to contactinaroad at gmail.com. If this blessed you, then subscribe and share it. I know we're going through some really challenging times right now. And I, I just want to encourage you and remind you that although Jesus never promised a problem-free life, he did promise that he'll get us through it.